ten boiled shirts, ladies and gentlemen. Ten boiled shirts. And uh, it's the same shirts that they wore last year. And the, and the year before. But we're doing a programme called Stomp Off Let's Go. And it's uh, the large black orchestras of Chicago. So if you were somewhere in Chicago um, from about 1928, 29, 30, and went to the larger venues, the theatres, you would see orchestras like this. Um, people like uh, household names, Erskine Tate, yes, no? And, uh, uh, or Carol Dickerson and his orchestra, Earl Hines, and King Oliver's Dixie Syncopators. King Oliver, unfortunately, can't be with us tonight. But we do have a very good replacement. He's got a headache, yes. Thank you, gentlemen. So we start with um, uh, the uh, Erskine Tate Orchestra with Louis Armstrong. Please stand up, Louis. You, yes, he's here. There he is. Uh, okay. Are you ready, boys? was resident at the Vendome Theatre in Chicago and it was Louis it was the first time two things happened to Louis Armstrong. He played the trumpet for the first time with Erskine Tate's band and he came and he did a solo act on the stage above the orchestra because they were often playing in, in the pit. So there we are. Uh, Duke Heitger, ladies and gentlemen. Now if you wandered further down uh, you come ac across a large ballroom venue called Dream Dreamland and there was an even bigger orchestra there and it was that of, uh, what was it, Doc Cook's Eleven Doctors of Syncopation. There we are. So we're going to play one number that Doc Cook did and we have the lovely Mellow to join us. Now, this is, it is a song about worry. 
And you are worried, aren't you? <laughs> She's going to pour her heart out to you. Then. I got worried. to give counselling lessons for anybody who wants to know about worrying. I'm first in the queue. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Now, those of you who collect records, uh, it's not exactly what happened with the with the bands, you know, the, the records that you have. Some, sometimes the bands were recording bands only and they, they didn't actually work in the clubs and theatres, but uh, we're going to play a number now called Chicago Breakdown. Oh, 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 oh. oh you've got the different one there. That's right. right. Chicago Breakdown. Okay. And it was, it's labelled, when you get the 78, as Louis Armstrong and his Hot Seven. But it's not. It's a full 10-piece uh, orchestra with the saxophones. And they played briefly at the Sunset Cafe in Chicago. And it was Louis Armstrong and his Sunset Stompers. And uh, the pianist was Earl Hines. And I'm really looking forward to playing his stuff. <laughs> there we go. <coughs> Think of me, chaps. <laughs> Chicago Breakdown was written by Jelly Roll Morton, of course. And uh, they only made one record, uh, the, the Stompers. It was really good. Except for the piano player. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you. 
of the orchestra at the trombone uh, playing his 1933 Vincent Bach instrument which is held together with elastoplasts so I, I gather Jim Fryer ladies and gentlemen the trumpets um, well actually it's cornet and trumpet ladies and gentlemen Andy Shum Duke Heidegger and the reed section are the, I always say this they're at their sexual peak <laughs> we have Richard Exel Robert Fowler and last one I don't know about sexual peaks by the look of him he, he looks a bit weary I've had my day. You've had your day, have you? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, wearing this year's spats, Thomas Langer. <laughs> the sousaphone, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, a splendid gent there. He's uh, Newcastle... Are you Newcastle? Hexham, please. Hexham. Hexham. <laughs> born and bred? Uh, just about. Just about. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Phil Rutherford. <laughs> And at the Grand Jazz Percussion Kit, with lots of accoutrements, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nick Ball. So if you wandered away from the uh, dreamland after seeing Doc Cook in his orchestra, you wandered down to the plantation. The plantation. Um, King Oliver's Dixie Syncopators played there until 1925 when it burned down in a fire and uh, it opened up as a McDonald's and the, I believe the King Oliver band still play there so we're going to play a tune that they actually marketed big time in uh, 1926 and this is called, it's a real low down blues ain't it man snag it
Captain, Captain, why did you be so cross? I'm Captain, Captain, why did you be so cross? Cause it's 12 o'clock and you won't knock off, won't knock off. Nothing like the old songs, is it? Really? Snag it. Real, real blues and uh, King Oliver. They, they, they actually went round town on a lorry, uh, advertising the the latest <coughs> release of Snag It. So uh, I don't know whether it's uh, entered the hit parade, but it certainly deserves to. Hey, gentlemen, have you heard of Carol Dickerson? Yes. yes. Not Carol Levis. Carol Dickerson. He was a band leader, played violin, and he took over uh, the leadership of bands at the Sunset Cafe. Now, I think uh, Andy Shum is a resident of Chicago. Can you tell us a bit about the su Sunset and where it is? And yeah, 35th and Martin Luther King in Bronzeville. Right? right. It's, it's an Ace Hardware now. It's an Ace Hardware yeah, store, and we can buy washboards in there, can't yeah, we? Some haven't, but my plunger's from the Ace Hardware. Oh, Ace, Ace Hardware store, yeah. It, it's amazing, really, just talking about things, because we in Europe, we don't know about stores and things like that. Now, Johnny Dodds <coughs> recorded a tune called Piggly Wiggly, which we've known for years. We don't know what Piggly Wiggly is. Piggly Wiggly was a chain of hardware store, uh, uh, grocers, wasn't it? Yeah, still exists. Still exists. I've actually got a Piggly Wiggly bag, which I'm going to auction off in the interval. <laughs> so, we're going to do a tune by Carol Dickerson and his orchestra with that dreadful man, Earl Hines, on the piano. I curse his name. And Louis Armstrong uh, played uh, with Carol Dickerson, made a lot of records, actually, in 1929. Slightly earlier, there was a man called Willie Hightower. And I think Andy Shum is going to be Willie Hightower, aren't you? Right, okay. So, Missouri Squabble. So, uh, if you anybody knows the steps of the Missouri Squabble, please, there's a small floor here. Are you ready? Uh, one, a two, a one. Oh. Thank <laughs> you. 
You know, in those days, all the instruments were were different. The saxophones were different to the ones that are for sale today. Certainly, I think brass instruments were smaller, weren't they? Jim, smaller, smaller trombones. Yes, the the, the, the big the, as time went on, the bigger ones became more in fashion. That's right. Okay, the, these were called pea shooters in those days. And they right? actually they they can shoot peas. It's true. <laughs> Now, um, drumming, of course, drumming, uh, uh, 1927, 28, had they got the temple blocks? Uh, yeah, I think so. They'd just come in, into yeah. yes, uh, the, the skulls. Could you play a little uh, thing on the skulls first? <laughs> They're called Korean temple blocks, but really they are skulls of famous trade union leaders. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a wallop on the on the littlest one. Little. That's Arthur Scargill. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to play a piece by a band that came up briefly for one week in 1929. They were formed in Chicago uh, with a big, uh, glowing uh, future. And nothing happened. They were called uh, Marlo Hardy and his Alabamians. They were all from Chicago. It's amazing, really. Yeah, and um, uh, Thomas Langham is going to sing uh, one of the songs. They only recorded two before their contract was uh, null and void. I know the feeling. Yes. And uh, he's going to sing Georgia Pines. And it's a great pity because Marlo Hardy band was great, but uh, nobody heard them. They, they went off, off on tour and never returned. <laughs> <laughs> right, Marlo Hardy and his Alabamians. One, two, uh, one, two, three, two, one.
Thomas Lang. Okay, that's, uh, yes, so not all the bands made it big, of course. Oh, now we've got a, another vocal from Tom. It's the Earl Hines Orchestra. He's still here to plague me, Earl Hines. And uh, he brought in a band after Carol Dickerson left for New York. And uh, the Earl, Earl Hines Orchestra. It's this lovely number written by a Frenchman. And it's... Uh, called Sweet LMA and it shows the high tenor register of Thomas's uh, voice and I shall be having a grip on you to make sure you, you, get, you boy. get the high notes even the sharp stick only with your assistance can I attain these lofty heights <laughs> you'll love this now um, when he's singing I I really want you to not listen to his singing because what is beautiful is the saxophones behind yeah, Thomas singing. So it's a blot, blot the, the falsetto singing out and, and hear what's going on underneath. Sweet Ella May, sweet Ella May. Oh yes, there's a baritone saxophone at the beginning. Who's uh, the unlucky person? Oh, Robert Fowler. Yes. Uh, do you slap tongue? <laughs> Is it, is it? Okay, well, well, we'll just have to wait and see. This is what we call a medium foxtrot. One, two, one, two, three, four. special guest with us this evening, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, Mr. Behind you. Behind you. Mr. Gunther Andernacht, ladies and gentlemen. 
<laughs> You're asking yourself, what does he play? Is it an alpen horn or bagpipes? What is it? A kitson harp. A what? A kitson harp. What? A kitson? What's, what's that? Washboard. Washboard. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Yes. Now, the idea, we, we, we can't play this following number without the washboard. It's called Stomp Off, Let's Go. And the famous washboard player, Jimmy Bertrand. Look at this. Can you see, ladies and gentlemen? He's very visual as well. He's got two wood, he has two wood blocks and three cowbells, all tuned. Look at that. It deserves a round of applause just to look at him, ladies and gentlemen. Now, there's a secret on how to start this number. Uh, the van leader shouts out, stomp off, let's go. And miraculously, the band just starts. <laughs> I can't guarantee. Here we go. Stomp off, let's go! Good! Just signed a contract with Zanussi, by the way. <laughs> He's setting up a, a little uh, thing in uh, out there, and he'll do all your your smalls for you while, while you're here, all over the weekend. Right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to finish with uh, a number played by Jelly Roll Morton and his Red Hot Peppers. Now they were seven-piece band, but we're 
we're doing it with ten. And it's called The Chant. Okay. So, uh, we'll sign off with that before. Uh, let's just go through them again. Jim Fryer. Andy Shaw. Duke Heitler. Richard Exel. Robert Fowler. Lars Frey. Thomas Spatzlein. Keith Nichols. Phil Rutherford. Nick Ball. And the lovely Mellow who joined us. Mellow. A number called The Chant. It wasn't written by Jelly Roll, but uh, he made the definitive recording of it. Um, are we going to do it as Beethoven said, tear us? <laughs> you reckon? Really? Uh, one, two, one, two, three, four. Thank <laughs> you.